Let's get started. Look over at your neighbor. You know how this works by now, right? Look over at your neighbor, and I need you to ask them this question. Ask them this right here. Did you really think that is attractive? (laughs) Now say that with a smile. I'm not being ugly. You, You didn't let me finish everything. You respond back to them, say, well, yes, I did. (laughs) Well, yes, I did. How many of y'all know that wisdom is attractive? Amen? Tell them, look over your name, tell them, it does look good on you. It looks good on you. Wisdom is attractive. We can prove that by the Word of God. (laughs) Thank you for asking. Matter of fact, we'll go there here in a little bit. How about that? So we've been in this series about wisdom for... Uh, weeks and weeks. Uh, I don't know that we will stop the series, but we're going to move on to a different series, and hopefully there'll be wisdom that comes out of that one as well. Amen? And and so uh, today... We're going to talk about this passage. This is, this is in Proverbs 11.30. We're going to start in another spot just in a minute. But Proverbs 11.30, we get right to the point. It says, he that wins souls is wise. He that wins souls is wise. How many of y'all want to walk in wisdom? Then win souls, right? Win souls. And so we're just going to walk in that. We're going to look at that. We're going to kind of dissect that and pull some really good stuff out of there. And... Uh, how many of y'all know that we live in a time that there's some real problems? Huh? Real. Everybody say real. real. The reason we're getting ready to do that is because next week we start a new series on real. That will be the acronym that we're looking at. And it's Restoring R, Empowering E, Abundant Life. How many of y'all believe we need to see the abundant life that Jesus Christ has planned for us restored? Amen. And empowered. Jesus come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Everybody say abundant life. So we're going to start with that. We're going to run through that up into the Christmas program uh, on the 22nd of December. And we're excited about that through Thanksgiving. Anybody thankful for anything in the house today? Amen. Jesus done any good stuff for you? You bet. And so, and that's real, isn't it? The world don't know if that's real. They don't know if he's real. Hey, I heard the Wake Boys got saved. Is that real? Woo! Give me some love. I think it's real. What do you think? Huh? Right? And so we live in a world where a lot of fake stuff out there, right? Huh? I left one wake boy hanging. If the other one's watching, we love you too, Lynn. All right. Come on. I'm sorry. You love the preacher, right? Give me some love. Is that real? It's real, ain't it? How many of y'all like being really loved by Jesus? Isn't that good? And, and, and how many of y'all like the peace? The peace of Jesus. Isn't that real? Huh? Just real. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about those things that are real. And today, um, who is it that was that tree of life? See, this is what, this is what that proverb talks about. It, it, it says, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. And he that wins souls is wise. That's Proverbs 11.30. We'll look at it and break it down some more. Who did you have in, in, in your life that was that tree of life? How, how many of y'all know that whenever you... When we talk about the fruit of righteousness, how many of y'all know if there's a fruit tree out here? Let's paint this picture. I love the way that the Word of God teaches and instructs. We get all kinds of visual pictures. How many of y'all have ever seen a, a, a fruit tree... That was just that. I would like to have some of that, right? Uh, apples or oranges or peaches or something along those lines, right? You can, you can see those fruit trees. How many of y'all know that the world ought to be able to see your fruit? Your fruit of righteousness. The, the, the world should be able to come. And how many of y'all know we've got more than enough Jesus to share, right? And so you ought to be able to share that fruit. Amen. It's something that will nourish them, right? Some of those characteristics of fruit, it's sweet to be with Jesus, isn't it? This series, as we come to a conclusion, we was talking about this last week, about 
this last day's outpouring and how that prophecy and the wisdom of God that's contained within the prophecies and with the promises of God, how that we can see those things coming to, coming to pass. Those are those converging lines of the prophets said it way back here. Now we just saw it on the news here. And so we see these things coming together. And this is what we know about the last days. Here's what we're going to see, and I'm going to build off of this today uh, from this, this passage in, in, in Proverbs. The Scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Know this also that in the last days, everybody say last days. This is 2 Timothy 3, 1. That in the last days, perilous times, everybody say dangerous, violent, fierce. If you read from... Uh, amplified or some of the, the, the Greek translation, it will, it will give you that. That's what that word perilous times. In the last days, I believe that we're in the last days. And I've, I've, I've stated that case if we've, as we've gone through. And so what a time to walk in the wisdom of God, right? That perilous times will come. And we can stop there. We could read on. And then we also read, Joel prophesied this uh, like 2,700 years ago, Joel prophesies this right here about 700 years before Christ. Then Peter quotes this on the day of Pentecost. Know this also that in the last days, right? In the last days, that he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. So what's it going to be? Is it, is, it a, is it perilous times or is it an outpouring of God? Look over at your neighbor and tell them, it's both. It's both. That's where we're at. And so, how are you going to walk this out? You need a made-up mind. You need to already have it. This, and I've already thought through this whole thing. I already know where I'm going to stand on this. So, perilous times, they're here. How many of y'all know? It, it's kind of ugly out there, right? But what a time for the light to shine. Now, I want to start in Matthew 5.13. And so, you can turn there, open up there. We'll get it up on the screen for you. Matthew 5.13. And so, we're going to say about ourselves what the Word of God says about us. And uh, we're going to talk about salt to begin with. Here's what Jesus says about you. You are, everybody say, I am the salt of the earth. That's who we are. Huh? You are. And so what we know about salt, Pastor Scott talked about this in early service. What we know about salt in the days when this was written, it was a preservative. It was the only way that life, the shelf life of meat was extended during that day, right? And so what we know about being the salt of the earth is that you are the one that can preserve or can extend life. Everybody say abundant life. Abundant. We're looking at restoring and empowering Abundant life. And so salt is a preservative. That's who you are. When we go ahead and we read the rest of this, he goes through this entire dialogue, and there's some very strong language in this passage. You are the salt of the earth, but... Whoa. If the salt... Didn't say it has, but if the salt has lost its savor, if it's lost its saltiness... Wherewith shall it be salted? It's henceforth good for nothing. Everybody say good for nothing. Woo, strong language. So what happens to that salt? It's cast out and it's trodden underfoot of men. It's trodden underfoot. It's thrown away. I mean, all I've ever had just regular table salt. And maybe it drew moisture or it went this or whatever. And it just wasn't good for anything anymore. What would you do with it? Put it up and make a trophy out of it. No, you didn't. You threw it away. Amen. We don't want to be that kind of salt, right? We want to walk in the things that God has called for us to walk in. Then the next de declaration that, and these are Jesus' words. He says, you are, this is verse 14, you are, everybody say, I am, light of the world. Listen, here's some other characteristics uh, about salt. Not only... Um, is it a preservative? Let me find where I've got this uh, written here. Give me just a second. It flavors. Hmm. Marsha has not lived a boring life, I can tell you that. It's been flavorful, hasn't it, honey? Yeah, yeah. I'm a blessed man, and she's a very fortunate woman. That's the way we always tell her. I'd mentioned that to you in early service, didn't I? Okay. It flavors life. I mean, all she gives life some spice and the right kind. Amen. 
It's the fruit of righteousness. It looks good. It's attractive. Now, the third thing that we talk about with salt is that it creates thirst. Is that true? Hmm? Some of you are getting ready to sit down to a big old Thanksgiving ham. I love ham. It don't take long for it to turn to food around here, right? A Christmas ham. Ham two months in a row. I thought I heard angels for just a moment. Salt creates thirst. Whenever we live an attractive life, how many of y'all know that people are attracted to light? Out of darkness and into light. Out of death and into life. Right? Out of hatred and into love. And the list goes on and on. Hopelessness to hope. Right? We could, huh? Brokenness to blessedness. It's attractive. Look over your neighbor and tell them, that really looks good on you. Huh? Wisdom looks good on you. Now, all of that to just speak to some of the things that Jesus is saying to us is that there is a drawing power of those who are walking in love. When the world sees, when the world sees you walking in the love of God and the peace of God and the joy of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, how many of you know those are attractive things? And we need to live that. And so we're going to talk about winning souls and, and how we do that. I heard an old preacher uh, a long, long time ago quote this. I don't know where it originated from. But he talks about preaching the gospel and he said, and when necessary, use words. In other words, live the gospel. Let people see that fruit. Let them be drawn to that. How many of y'all remember? Let's go back to Genesis. We're going to talk about the tree of life. How many of y'all remember what happened back there when Eve saw the fruit? Everybody say she saw it. And she saw it was something to be desired. And so it is today. It's the way God created us. It's the way he created fruit trees. And the scripture says, let's go to Proverbs 1130. And we're going to get this in context now so that you can see where we're at right here. I want you to see this. Everybody read this with me. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that wins the souls is wise. Wisdom wins souls. The fruit of righteousness can be seen. When there is a fearlessness that pastor was talking about and you're not afraid. How many of y'all know that's attractive? We said these words last week. I'll repeat them again today. I think if anything that I saw out of this election, I saw that the United States of America is hungry for a change. It's hungry for a change. And it'll be, listen to me, it'll be more than politics can bring. I'm also confident that a lot of America don't know and don't realize the change that it actually needs. And so we look in this area, and that wasn't what I was looking for. And we look in this area, and that wasn't what it was looking for. But you can look over at your neighbor and say, that is attractive. That what you have on that wisdom, that righteousness that you're wearing today is attractive. Amen. The world should be drawn to that. So we don't need to let the light hide. We don't need to conceal the fruit. We need to be that tree of life. And when they see that tree of life, they are drawn to it just like Eve was in Genesis. Wrong tree, wrong fruit. Huh? She ate from the fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. How many of y'all know Jesus hanging on a tree? If there was ever anyone that modeled what it means to be a tree of life and the fruit of righteousness, anybody agree with me? It was Jesus himself. And so when we look at his example, we can see those things. I want to read this to you from uh, the Amplified Version. And so uh, it says this concerning this Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the uncompromisingly. Look over to your name and tell them, don't compromise. I committed this definition of compromise to my heart a long, long time ago. I would encourage you to perhaps adopt it. Compromise is accepting what you don't believe because you refuse to stand up for what you do believe. Hmm? 
accepting what you don't believe. You, you see, there's a lot of people in this world that want you to compromise your right standing with God. It'll make them feel better, but it'll make you feel worse. I love that line, the uncompromisingly righteous. I'm just going to keep doing what Jesus said to do, and if it makes you uncomfortable, um, think about it. Hmm? Think about it. The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. Listen to this. Now, this word in, in the Greek that we read earlier that wins souls, there are several different translations, several different things that that word has a connotation of. And so we're going to talk about some of those. Listen to it from the Amplified. Is a tree, uh, uh, this righteousness is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures, King James says, wins captures human lives. Listen, there are a lot of things in this world that has caught my eye. How about you? Ooh, kind of like the way that looks. Ooh, I could use two of those, one of those. Cap, they, they catch my eye. But I can tell you, Jesus captured my heart. Anybody say amen? amen. There's a difference. A lot of things that catch your eye. Hmm. Now, I was talking about in early service, get you, get you white hankies out ready. But back in the day when we were kids and going to church, some of the senior ladies of the congregation would get their white hankies out and they would wave them. So if you got any white hankies there, let's go back a little ways and remember some of that. Or you can borrow a Kleenex there and we're going to do a little hanky waving today. How many of y'all know that'd be okay? Any old folks around here remember that besides me? Good stuff, huh? All right, it's okay. All right, some of you young ones need to learn some stuff right here. This is where wisdom flows from. All right. It's, it's, it's a pretty thing. All right. Um, let me read the rest of it in context. The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures human, heart or human lives for God as a fisher of men. Oh, there's a phrase that I've heard before. Didn't he tell his disciples something about, lay down your nets, come follow me, and I will make you, help me, fishers of men. Well, you know how you catch fish? Well, first of all, you've got to catch fish where they are, not where you want them to be. I grew up in a fishing family. Shelby, you are a fishing guide. It would be great if you could just catch them where you want them to be, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Hey, I got this lovely mud hole out here in my driveway. Think I'll go catch some crappie today. It's really handy because I don't have to go far from the door. I'll just step out, grab my pole, and go fish the mud hole. How many of y'all know that's not where the fish are? Fish sometimes are very... <laughs> They're in some of the most inconvenient places. Thank God for those who come to God's house seeking and asking and knocking. But the majority of the fish are out there in the world. And so to catch fish, you're going to need to go to the world. Amen? That's where they are. That's where the righteous shine. That's where that wisdom comes forth. That's where they can see the fruit of that tree of life and say, wow, I'd like to be happy like that. It would be so nice to have peace like that. It would be awesome to not be afraid. Boy, I've done some things I wish I hadn't done. I'd like to be forgiven like that. And they're pointing at your tree. They're looking at you. Hmm? Nothing special here. Just found how to live born again. Isn't that a good place to get to live? Amen. Simple message. Listen, there's nothing complicated whatsoever about this right here. Fishers of men, right? And, and so this is Matthew 4, 19, where he says that I'll make you fishers of men. 
Uh, the other thing, not just catching fish where they are, but where you want them to be. The other thing is to be ready when the fish are. Huh? You can go walking along in your life, and, and, and God has this divine appointment, this divine assignment all set up for you, and you're too busy, and you will miss the opportunity to catch the fish of a lifetime. you got to be ready when they are. Being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and letting your light shine all the time. If necessary, use words. People looking at your life. Did the wake boys really get saved? Yeah, that's real. Let your light shine. Hmm? Did DL? You mean? Listen, if some of my old friends that I used to run with said, he's doing what? He's been doing it for how long? No, that ain't happening. How many all know God is good and living for him is attractive? That's all this message is about. Just being a tree of life. Just being a tree of life. The third thing is, is you feed them what they're hungry for, what they really need. If you're going to be fishers of men, then you feed them not what they may think they need, but what they really need. There's a lot of things that's catching this world's eye, but it hasn't captured the heart. Whenever you can have that connection. In early service, our senior adults pastor, Danny Hicks, was sitting right here. When you guys just have no idea what a road Marsha led me down when I was young and impressionable. That's my story. Stay with me now. She's not waving the hanky on this one, just so you know. Danny Hicks, you see, we were surrounded by a forest of trees of life. Nearly all of my family's believers. Nearly all of my family's believers. What a great way to get to grow up. I grew up in a preacher's house, in a pastor's home, and some of the things that I saw in my early life in church are some of the things that shouldn't happen in church. Anybody got any scars from things that shouldn't happen in church? You don't have to raise your hand, but I know what happens in church. I've lived it my whole life. Hmm? And then I watched my mom. Her head was laying on my lap when I was 17 years old. It was a Friday the 13th, 1978, and I watched her take her last breath on this earth. And it scarred my heart. My dad was a preacher. My mom was a saint. There's a difference. Jeff says the same thing about his mom. All right. And I was on the run from God. And Danny and Beth, just about every Friday night, they would say, uh, hey, we're going to go out for pizza. And they never crammed it down our throat. Listen to me. They just lived a fruitful, righteous life. Week after week after week. And we kept watching them having joy and having peace and having the blessing of God on their life. And uh, I wasn't interested in the whole Jesus thing. But every time they say, hey, you want to go get pizza? I was in. And uh, you can only run so far from God, and then somewhere along the line, you've got to square up with yourself. Amen. You just have to square up with yourself. And pride was really a, it was in my way quite a bit right there, but I wanted what they wanted. I just didn't want to have to do it Jesus' way. Hmm. We're going to talk about catching fish. You're responsible to be a witness. Listen to me. But you are not responsible for the results. They get to choose. Amen? God's not going to hold you to account. Well, they rejected. We're, we have to get past the fear of rejection. Hmm? Some of you are afraid to talk to anybody or to share with anybody and to live your life in front of them because let's just call it for what it is. Probably your ego and your pride. 
I'm afraid. Pastor Scott just addressed that. Why? Yeah? Don't be afraid. Why would you afraid? Why, why are you afraid of being right? What are you afraid of sharing something that is so attractive? Huh? It's attractive. Fishers of men. All right, I still haven't even got through this whole amplified thing yet. The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. It's not about dying. It's about living. It's living eternally. It's heaven and hell. What a beautiful thing. How I many all are thankful for the gift of eternal life? The wages of sin are death, the gift of God's life. Why would we not share the gift? There's plenty to go around. But yet we allow the enemy to intimidate us. We allow fear to intimidate us. We allow pride or ego to intimidate us. And we hide what is so attractive, what Jesus has done on the inside. Is anybody thankful for what Jesus has done in your life? You bet me too. Me too. I know who I was. I know who I am. And I still am not what I'm going to be. Anybody say man? Still working on me. How about you? I don't have it all right. It's not all perfect. But I can tell you something that's real. I know me before Jesus and I know me after Jesus. And you would like this guy a lot better. Hmm? Anybody say amen to that? Amen. Nobody misunderstood that one, right? Yeah. Okay, let's grab us another verse right here. Uh, Psalm 1. Let's talk about Psalm 1 1. Let's talk about trees for just a moment. I love what the psalmist writes here for us. Psalm 1 1. Hymn number one in the Jewish songbook. Right? Psalm 1. Blessed is the man. And what do blessed people do? They bless people. That's the way it works. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel. Everybody say wisdom. He doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He's walking in wise counsel. Righteous counsel. And because he does, he's a tree of life to those that can see that fruit. Eve saw the fruit and she was desirous of that fruit. And by God's design, people can still see the fruit of your life. Didn't Jesus teach us that? You'll know them by their fruit. James says, listen, th this water, this well, it cannot give salt water and fresh out of the same well. It's going to be one or the other. Right? The fig tree doesn't bear olive berries. Everything reproduces after its own kind. The world cannot reproduce real joy, real happiness, real love, lasting eternal life without Jesus. But you can, and you can share the gift because there's plenty to go around. Jesus told the woman in, 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 in uh, was it John 4? John 4, uh, the Samaritan woman. If you drink of this water... You will thirst again. But if you drink of the water I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. Isn't that awesome in that right there? It's just one of those, and it's just bubbling, and it's pouring out that spring. It will be in you a spring or a well of water springing up. Everybody say springing up into eternal life. Right now, get your hankies out. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Woo! A little spring water and a white hanky. Life is good. Let's go for another one. Matthew 7, or John 7, I should say. John 7. John 7, and it's right along verse uh, 37, 38, somewhere along in there. Jesus is preaching. And he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Everybody say rivers. Rivers of living water. Rivers speaks to something when it's plural. Everybody say it again. Rivers. Plural. It speaks to something flowing out of you that is absolutely immeasurable. 
You've got more than you need. You can share. And he said he was talking about the Holy Spirit, which hadn't yet been given because Jesus hadn't gone back to the Father yet. But when he went back to the Father, he said, I'll send you another comforter, even the Spirit of truth, and he'll be with you, in you. And Acts 1 and 8 says he come upon you. Everybody say, with me, in me, and upon me. Woo! Hanky time. Good stuff. That's Holy Ghost time, see? That's Holy Spirit time. You say, well, we just don't say that around here. Yes, we do. We say that all the time around here. I want those rivers flowing out of my belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you thought that was just D.L. eating ham, didn't you? All right. Rivers. Rivers of living water. I love the word pictures that Jesus gives us you're a tree of life mm. blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners or doesn't sit at the seat of the scornful well, i just don't believe that i just don't know but i've tried that church thing try jesus jesus doesn't fail churches and church people sometimes do but jesus doesn't he was love. He is love. Hmm? All those things he's spoken to us are true. He doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Listen to this. And he'll be like a tree planted by rivers. See, this is where these come together. At He's like a tree, a tree of life planted by an ever constant <laughs> supply of water. Rivers of water. That does what? He brings forth his fruit in his season. Look up to your neighbor and tell them, it's our season. It's our season right now. Listen, listen to, how many of all believe God doesn't make mistakes? Amen. Right? Then he did not make a mistake when you were born in this time, in this day, and in this season. God does not make mistakes. You were not born too early. You were not born too late. You were born right on time. And this is your season. Anybody say amen? Wave your hanky. Come on, hanky time. Hanky time. It's your season. It's our time. What a time to be alive. When on one side, the devil is doing all his devil stuff and we'll see and are seeing increase in demonic activity. But on the other side, God never gets upstaged by the devil and he's pouring his spirit out in these last days and you get to be a part of it because it's that season. It's that season. And you're right in the middle of it. Tree of life. Planted by that river. Woo! Now listen to the rest of what he says in this verse. Listen to the rest of this. Psalm 1-3. That brings forth his fruit in his season. It's your season to bring forth your fruit. Look over to your neighbor and tell him you're a tree of life. A fruitful tree. Not a fruit cake. Okay, just... Hey, it's sweet too. Well, anyway. Let me tell you... Let me give you one thing about a fruit cake. I suspect those cherries, they don't taste like the cherries I've picked off of trees. I'm just saying I have an issue with fruit cake. They need it. Anyway, all right, we'll move right on. That didn't cost you. That's not in here either. Okay. Stay with me. Planted by the rivers of water, brings forth the fruit in season. Bring forth your fruit in season. His leaf won't wither. Everybody say evergreen. 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 Leaf don't ever wither. Just green. No doubt about whether that tree's alive. No doubt about whether that tree's bringing fruit in its season. This is our season. It's time to be alive. It's time to live abundantly. Ooh. We're going to talk about that next week. I can't talk about it yet. That's a new series. All right. I might talk a little bit about it. In his season, his leaf also shall not wither. How many of y'all like the thought of prospering? Isn't this a beautiful promise? And whatsoever. Everybody say whatsoever. Whatsoever you do, it, it, it prospers. When you're walking in the will of God, listen to me. 
when you're walking in the will of God and you're leaning in, you're seeking, you're asking, you're knocking, and God's Spirit is leading you, you don't have to try to talk God into blessing your plan. If you're walking in His plan, it's already blessed and it's going to prosper. Isn't that good? It just takes the work and the worry out of that. God, I just lead me today. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And, and I want to walk and I want to grow that fruit of righteousness, that love and that joy and that peace. How many of y'all know about that Galatians 5, 22 and 23, fruit of the Spirit, right? Good stuff, isn't it? All right. All right. Uh, next line. Let's grab another one. Proverbs three thirteen. Proverbs 3.13. Let's get another one here. Proverbs 3.13. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. How many of y'all like happy better than tears? Huh? I like happy. I like happy. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding is happy. And we live in a world, so no, I'm not, I don't want any of that. Oh, wow. I'm sorry that you don't want to be happy. I like happy. Listen, I didn't, come, I didn't come to church today t to get discouraged or to get depressed. Did you? I come to hear a word of life. I come to hear a word of encouragement. I come to hear some life and some light and some joy. Yeah. All right. For the merchandise of it is better than silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. She is more precious. Everybody say, she is. Yes. Neat thing. Talking about wisdom. Several places in, in, in this Hebrew language that the word wisdom takes on a, what we would call a feminine name. Everybody say Sophia. 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 Wisdom. So she is. Sophia is. Right? Sophia is a tree of life. She is, wisdom is a tree of life. To them that lay hold upon her, happy is everyone that retains her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he has established the heavens. Mm. Verse 18, did I read past that? How many of y'all know don't read past scripture too quickly? Let's go back to verse 18. It says she's a tree of life. And them that lay hold upon her. Huh, they're happy. And everyone that retains her. Everyone that retains her. So let's go back there and let's, let's look at that verse 18 again. And everyone that We speak this all the time and I'm going to just repeat it into your ears. Hell will always attack the message, the messenger, and the method. Hell wants to stop the wisdom of God in your life in its tracks. And if it can't stop you from walking in it, it'll try to stop someone you could help from walking in it. You share, you share that tree of life. You just let the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of wisdom. Mm. Let's get another one. 1 Corinthians 9.19 the Apostle Paul teaches us in how we live this and how we walk this and how we win souls, right? The wise win souls. They attract them, they capture them, they gather, they receive, they gain. Those are some of the words that we, that we have read so far. 1 Corinthians 9.19, Paul's life. For though I be free from all men, how many all been made free? I know the word, the word, not truth is set free, right? Yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain more. To the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. How many of all know he could do that because he was Jewish of the tribe of Benjamin, right? Yes, he was. To them that are under the law, how many of all know he had lived under the law? That's when he was persecuting Christians, right? Put Stephen to death, consented to that. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. And so, everybody say, connect. You have to learn to let the Spirit of God teach you how to connect with people. The lanes that you have walked in your life, you can walk those lanes with others. You can walk those lanes. You speak that language fluently. Hmm. Now then. He goes on, to them that are without the law, as without the law. How many of y'all know he got set free from the law, from those old mosaic, the law 
of the life in Christ Jesus, the law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, right? That's what he teaches us in Romans. All right. To them that are without the law, as without law, being not without the law of God, but under the law of Christ. Why? That I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Mm. And this I do for the gospel's sake, the good news' sake, that I might be partaker thereof with them. Paul learned that from all of those lanes, all of the things that he had experienced in life, he learned to use them for Christ so he could connect people to that tree of life. I can talk to you as a Jew. He run that lane. What lanes have you run? You can speak that. Huh? And I look across this crowd, and for those that are watching, I know that there are so many different lanes and God has strategically done that so no one gets left out. No one gets left out. The good news is shared with all. All right, Aaron, if you want to come, we're about to wind down. Uh, Matthew 10, 32. Well, we're getting to Matthew 10, 32. Let me, let me say this about coming all, becoming all things to all men. Um, this is just a just a word of warning right here to be careful with. Um, I've had some conversations with some, and this is a, I mean, this is for real. Um, well, the apostle Paul, and they meant good, but they done something that was foolish. Um, when you're trying to connect, you don't compromise the word of God. And I've had some say, well, you know. I just wanted to go. I got some old buddies down at the bar. We'll just use this as an example. I got some old buddies down at the bar, so I went and hung out down at the bar. No problem yet. But then I got to drinking with them. And as they were drunk, I become drunk so I could blow it. Because it looks and sounds like the rest of the world. Where's the righteousness, the right standing? the tree of life hmm? the tree of life sowing those seeds of righteousness listen the spirit of God will never have you to compromise the word of God true? it's true Okay. Um, These are serious words right here. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. How do we win? How do we win those who are lost? Wisdom wins souls, right? Wisdom wins souls. It's attractive. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I can also confess uh, before my Father which is in heaven. That's good news, huh? If you confess him before men. And if necessary, use words, right? Yeah. Words are powerful. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And we all believe Jesus came. Coming back. I mean, all believe we're going to give account one day. We'll stand before. And for us to back away from this, because it may fly in the face of our ego, right? We're a little bit afraid of what might happen. Or what if they, what if they say no? What if they reject us? Listen to me. If they reject you, that's one thing. But if they reject Jesus, if they reject Jesus, that's a whole different level right there, amen. That's a whole different level. How do we share our faith? So number one, 
you need to be sure of your own salvation. How about that? The word Christianity has taken on a very different definition in today's culture and what it was when they were first called Christians in Antioch. Huh? And so they look at him, look at him, they're Christ like. These people that are sharing, they're they're Christ like. They're Christian. And that's what that word means. And so when you ask somebody if they're a Christian, I think that there's a lot of confusion in our world today about what that truly means. And I'm not trying to be condemning or condescending or ugly or anything like that. Words are powerful. And so you need to know that you are saved and you can. You can know that. First, um, First John 5.10. First John 5.10. I'm, I'm, I want you to see this. If you're here today or if you're watching and you're not sure, you're not sure. He that believes on the Son of God, 1 John 5.10, he that believes on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. If you're not sure, if you don't have that witness, then today you can be. You can have that witness. Let's, let's, let's read the rest of this. Hath that witness in himself. He that believes not, God hath made him a liar because he believes not. The record that God gave of his son. Do you not believe the record? This is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. Simple enough. Don't complicate it. Believe in the heart, confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's what he says, right? That's what your Bible says. And, and, and so, do you believe in your heart? Have you made confession with mouth? But I didn't feel anything, Pastor. It doesn't say anything in there about feeling it. It's an act of faith. It's just stepping out and trusting God's Word. If So often we miss the supernatural because we're looking for spectacular. Huh? Oh, I didn't hear bells and whistles and see sirens and lights and all those kinds of things. Right? But I was obedient. Everybody say obedient. I believe in my heart so I'll confess with my mouth. Lord Jesus. We're going to do that in a minute. We're going to pray. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son of God, with, he has no life. These things, listen to me. Verse 13, see this one. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. I know. I know what happened in my heart on December the 19th, 1982 on a Sunday night. I know that I connected with Jesus and I was born again. I haven't done it all right. I still thank God for grace and mercy. I'm still learning. I'm not who I was. And one day I won't be who I am today. We're still growing. We're still on a journey. Hmm? But there's fruit growing. You wouldn't have liked the old guy at all. He was kind of a jerk on his good days, right? So that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So I need to be sure of my own salvation. I need to get over the fear of rejection. And in the wisdom of sharing the gospel, use wisdom, right? Use wisdom. And here's what you need to know. As you're walking along and God has those divine encounters, God has those divine assignments, those divine appointments, He has planned for some divine outcomes. Know this in the wisdom of God, that God's working both ends to the middle. First of all, he's working on you as you're going and preparing your heart and preparing the words 
And he's preparing their heart and their ears to receive those. Hmm? So don't be afraid to share. Don't be afraid to share. If you make a mistake, err on the side of sharing the gospel of Christ. Err on the side of living the gospel of Christ where they can come to the tree and say, I see the fruit. I'd like some of that. Looks like a tree of life to me. Wave at me, Donna. Hey, Donna, wave at me. I want to share her story. I have permission to do this. So several years ago, there was a couple who was kindly searching for what God was looking for them to do. And she shared $100 with them and planted it into their life so that they could do a little getaway and, 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 and try to get with God and figure some things out. From that getaway was birthed the Pregnancy Resource Center in West Plains. The other day, this past week, they came back to Donna. Some of the return on the investment. And they gave her $100 back. But it was never about the $100. Listen, because of the tree of life, and there was a seed sown. Don't worry, I've, we've already taken up the offering. I'm not going to take up another one, okay? I've I seen some of you start to grab your chest. Don't worry about it. Nice. No, not that. I just want to tell you a true story. Listen, how many babies are alive today? Everybody say tree of life. Thank you, Donna, for rescuing babies. That's a whole lot more than a hundred bucks. Amen. Amen. And you live that. And there was a divine assignment. Huh? Divine instruction. Right? I didn't know that story until this morning. And I asked, she just was telling me that. She said, let me tell you what God done today. And a lot of those babies, probably most of them will never know Donna's name. But I know somebody that does, don't you? Jesus, amen. So the last thing, what do we do? Everybody say go. I'm going to do you guys just like my granddaughter uh, does us. When she's ready to go home, she'll look at me and grandma and say, I'm done with you. It's kind of a running joke inside of her family, just like you. Yeah. So I'm about to be done with you, but not quite. Your mission field's out there. Hmm? Go catch some fish. Go catch some fish. Go be that tree of life. Wisdom looks good on you. It's attractive. Walk in the wisdom of God. Now, wisdom of God would dare you to share. Maybe $100, maybe, I don't know. But it'll have results. Live it. Live it. Let's stand. We're going to pray our way out of here. We're going to first of all make sure that you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Listen to these words. Last passage, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them... Go, look over at your neighbor and tell them, go, get ready, huh? I'm about done with you. You can go. Go into all the world, preach the gospel when necessary, use words. Outside of that, just let the fruit grow. Let them see it. You'll know them, and they'll know you by the fruit. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. These signs, whoo. You know what signs are? They convey information, don't they? Hey, you got a sharp curve coming up. Hey, slow down. Hey, right? They convey information. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. <laughs> Didn't we sing about that name? Jesus, right? Yeah. Mm. Jesus' words, in my name shall they cast out devils they'll speak with new tongues they'll take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing it won't hurt them they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover hmm we're going to do that in a minute Barb so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God hey listen our Savior sitting on the right hand of God you know what he's doing he didn't take the rest of the day off 
He said he's making intercession for us. He's speaking into your ear by the Spirit here, and he's speaking into God's ear <laughs> there, making intercession. Hey, God, walk with them, go with them, help them. We got a big day planned for them. Hmm. Sat at the right hand of God, and they went. There's the key. And they went. So it's not a matter if you're getting ready to go. You're either going to stay here for the rest of your life or you're going to go. I'm done with you. Almost. About time for you to go. But when they went, this is what they did. They went forth and they preached. They just proclaimed. It's not pulpit preaching. Your pulpit's out there. Go catch some fish. Go live your life big and let the fruit let the fruit speak for itself. They preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word. Hey, you know what? He promised an outpouring in these last days. So as demonic activity picks up, I'm confident the outpouring and he will confirm his word. Everybody say confirming his word, the word, confirming the word with what? Signs, signs following. If you can look behind you and you can't see any signs that point to Jesus. Hmm? So we're going to make a confession of our faith. I've made this confession hundreds upon hundreds of times. And if you're born again and you've been saved, been walking with Jesus a long time, that's all good. How many all? It's just a positive confession. How many all believe that Jesus died for you? How many all believe he rose again? How many all believe he's coming back? How many all believe he's going to bring you and take you with him where he's going? I'm in. So let's make that confession of our faith. And if you don't know, you need to know. Believe with the heart. Confess with the mouth. And you'll be saved. Obedience. Not a feeling. Amen. Say these words with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus came and that he died for me. That he rose again on the third day. And that because of his resurrection, because of his blood, because of the cross, because I believe, I confess that with my mouth, and in Jesus' name, I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know. I know that I'm going home to be with you, and I want to share this wonderful fruit, this tree of life with the rest of the world. So let the fruit grow, easily seen, easily to nourish others. And may they come and may our lives share the goodness, and the graciousness, and the love, and the peace, and the life of Almighty God. And all those that agreed in Jesus' name said amen. amen. All right, I'm done with you. You can leave. I love you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus. Be blessed as you go. Thank you for being at Westside today. Next week, everybody say it's real. It's real. It's real. Amen. It's going to get real around here. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus.